Prince wanted to do a song with Jay Z. I'm 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 honored that he got on the remix. Um, but the craziest story to that is I got a FaceTime call maybe three different times while All The Way Up was out. And it was your man, the sixth guy, Drake. And he called me three different occasions out of nowhere. Yo, send me the instrumental. Send me the instrumental to All The Way Up. But when I had Toho, we doing the song, he said, look, Joe, it means so much to our history between me and you. Let's not put nobody else on this song. So he's not referring to Drake. He's like, it could have been Kanye. It could have, 50 Cent was asking to get on the remix. Everybody, you know, all the way up was big. Do you, you think? <laughs> it was the biggest. It was the biggest. But I'm saying to you. Uh, You're telling me it could have, but there, you think Drake. It Drake? definitely could have been Jay-Z and Drake and Fat Joe. Yeah, not could have. It was. You think there's a, you think the Drake verse exists? You think he, you think he did it? No, he didn't have the instrumental, but uh, you know, it's crazy because I'm a, I'm a beyond a huge fan of Drake, but I have to keep my word. My word is everything. So, you know, when, when I told Jay-Z, nah, nobody else on the song, um, I had to keep my word, but man, I wish it was Jay-Z, Drake, Fat Joe, and Remy. <laughs> Yeah, that shit would have been. Yo, you must really respect Drake for the level. Yo, Joe, if we, you're a master of hits. You're one of the biggest hit machines of all time. That dude's box set of hits is unlike any. Yo, the other day, Joe, I was trying to have a conversation with someone about Drake's hits, and I legitimately ended up, I was trying to come with comparisons. I ended up talking about the Beatles and Michael Jackson. This man's hit catalog, you must marvel at it, because I know you appreciate that shit. Me and my daughter have the same uh, discussion. We think him and Beyonce will probably be the only battle alive, something like Ooh, that. Ooh, Drake and Beyonce? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think a rapper, I don't think nobody could battle Drake. Drake is, <laughs> he's nasty, bro. <laughs> and, and, and me and my daughter, through Corona, we've been listening to a lot of Drake Essentials. And this man got so many hits, so many flows, so many. I'm like, it, it's, uh, he the best, man. He the best. Like, we've never seen a run like this before in hip hop ever, for this long. Ever, ever. And we've seen Ja Rule. I mean, the people could get mad at me all they want. But Ja Rule had a run. He did. Right? Like a major run where every song he came out with was a hit like that. L.O. Cool J, run. You know, but this Drake thing. This run, but this run's been going over a decade. It's over right. a decade straight. This Drake is a different thing, man. And it's, uh, man, <laughs> I wish I had Drake on the All The Way Up remix with me and Jay-Z. <laughs> No, that would have been yo. That, oh that would have been crazy. That oh would. But listen, let's not sleep on your bro, your run, bro. Because the the amount of errors you've had hits in, like you didn't think. Did you ever think after Lean Back that you would sniff anything like that again? That level. You talking to the wrong guy. Yeah, no. you always believe. You always. You always. Know you, you can always happen. Man, I'm a big believer in Fat Joe. Man, I know you are. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You're talking, I'm, I'm a, a huge believer of Fat Joe, and I still believe that Fat Joe could put one out the park now. Of course um, you can. What has it been, two, three years? Two, three years? Yeah, but I mean, like, you know, I've, I've always, you know, believed in myself. Now, Lean Back, that was a massive thing, man. That was, that was, that How that many weeks, lean, number one? How long was that number one? 47 weeks, number one. I mean, it ain't but 52 weeks in, in America. Like, you know, that shit was like, that was a different thing. It changed my life on another level. Yeah, that had to be, was that the biggest biggest thing that's ever happened for you professionally? What, what's love was huge for me. Yeah, what's love is. And, uh, and uh, 
Yeah. I couldn't perform for Black and Latinos for about two years. So everywhere I performed, What's Love was just uh, Z100, Winter Yeah, Fest. it really yeah, brought the gone, super crossover, yo. Denver, Colorado. <laughs> uh, I was literally performing in horse shows where, uh, no, I swear to God. I like believe you. Horses perform. Yeah. Half time, fat joke. You know, for 250000 Like, you know, like the bag was in the private plane. Like, it was like, I, I swear I used to I used to be like, damn, am I ever going to see black and Spanish people again? Like, that's what I think Pitbull and Flo Rida feel like. The bag is ginormous, but they like, yo, are we ever going to get urban again? Like, and that's what happened with What's Love. It was just uh, America discovered Fat Joe at that point. Yo, did you ever think when you, on Lean Back, you give Khaled the illest shout out of all time? And shout outs to Dre from Cool and Dre. Um, you Dre give, just dropped the conscious record today. It's called a word? Uh, uh, caption on an iPhone. All, right, all I see is ops, and he's talking about the time. He, it's on all platforms right now. Shout out to Empire. But Dre got some hot shit. Praise the man, yo. Praise yeah, the man. Yeah. So, you say, yo, Khaled, I see you. Yo, when you said that, Joe, that I didn't really know who he was yet. I didn't even know what you were saying. I knew Khaled's name before I knew Khaled was because of that shout out. First of all, did he ever tell you how big that was for him? And also at that time, did you ever imagine he would become a global superstar? Khaled don't tell me shit. <laughs> and um, I'm going to his house and I'll cut it out. Okay. Uh, Khaled thinks he made it on his own, but <laughs> uh, I'm so proud of this guy. Uh, Jesus, man. I, I'm just so blessed that my little brother made it so big. Like, you know, I go to his house. It's, it's, it's white. You drive your car over white marble outside. like the, So, you know, you go to the, the long driveway to the house. Yeah. Marble. It's white, but yeah. Like you're not even driving on concrete. It's just you and you gotta wear booties in there, no sneak. I mean, the man got six hundred dollar candles outside the house. It's outside in the air. Like I like I ask him, I'll be like, yo, Kelly, you can keep this shit up, bro. Like, are you okay? You're like, yo, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud, man. I'm so proud of him. Uh, and everyone says, everyone says, you know, because I didn't know Khaled until, like, he started putting out records. 07, 08. I didn't know Khaled till then. But everyone says he was always this guy. He always was talking crazy. He was always, he was in the mentality of being Khaled even before he was Khaled. Yeah, I fell in love with him. Um, that's why I moved part of the reason I moved to uh, Miami. Other, the other reason was New York, they have no unity. Everybody was dissing each other. And I'm just, when I came here with Cool and Dre and Khaled, I just fell in love with them. But I knew Khaled, uh, did I know that Khaled would be this big? No way. But his, his energy, and he's always been the same guy. And, and Khaled is a phenomenal DJ. Phenomenal. Like, I used to come to DJ battles and Khaled was putting their heads up. And anywhere Khaled DJ, it's similar. I say the only DJ that got, God bless everybody, but got that type of following is Camilla. Wherever Camilla's going to DJ, you know it's ran back. Of course, every time. Similar thing with Khaled to where wherever he was DJing, ran back. Yep. And uh, his energy was incredible, but he was always the same guy. You know, and um, but now he got a bigger scope on him, and um, and I'm just proud of him, man. And he and, and he's become a real record man, man. He got he got so many, so, so many. many hits. And it's it's and it he, took time. It took time. Like at first, the records were cool, and then it got to the point where he was making just hammers, one hammer after another. And now, I mean, you look at the ones he has with Quavo and Chance and Bieber. It's it's ridiculous what he's got now. It's I'm, the Rihanna, I'm so the Rihanna. Uh, shout out to Grand Poobah. Grand Poobah is another lyricist that was similar 
to Lord Finesse, who had that Lord Finesse Big L effect, to, uh, I remember being in a club, and mm -hmm. it was at the time where everybody liked to dance. You know, everybody's, hip hop was dancing. Hip hop was you dancing. You know, Benetton bags, everybody dancing. And I remember the DJ said, brand new grand pull up. And everybody ran to the speaker to hear the new song. The club stopped dancing, ran to the speaker to hear what he was saying. Was it what goes around or was it I like it? Which one you remember? Step to the rear, Grand Poopers oh, yeah. on arrival. Yeah. Man, man, they're all going to songs because the Bible. But everybody was running to the speaker to hear that. You know, not too many artists can imagine Club Live, everybody stopped and running to the speaker to hear somebody, you know, shout Yo, out Grand Poopa. Poopa is kind of a name that people forget that there was a moment when it, shit was his, like, Poobah was the fucking dude. He had the style. Everybody want to dress like him. Yup. The Gerbo, uh, the polo. Yeah, everything. He started, he started Tommy Hilfiger said he was yep. just, uh, he studied Grand Poobah. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Tommy, Tommy said that himself. Tommy Hilfiger said, this is crazy. Uh, and I, you know, I hate when people use the word culture vulture or appropriation and all this shit going on, right? But if it's a such thing, then it's Tommy Hilfiger. <laughs> I'm watching the DVD on fashion or whatever the 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 the, the what you call it, documentary, and he said he would ride through Central Park because he lived in Westchester County. And, and make him go through Harlem on purpose. And he would notice the kids were wearing baggy uh, uh, shirts with big names on it and all that. And that's how he came up with uh, Hilfig. But, and, 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 and he also, in that documentary, talked about Grand Poobah. Like, you know, his style. If you're, so, if, if you're one of the people watching who's young and you don't know about Grand Poobah and Brand Nubian and the way Poobah was when he was a solo artist, Go look up the video for what goes around 360. That era, he was so scorching hot and, and was his rhymes were crazy, voice crazy, style crazy. I mean, listen, and it was tough to stand out. He's next to Sadat X. Sadat X has one of the illest voices ever in the history of hip hop, ever. Sadat X is my brother. So is Lord Jamal uh, and Brand Nubian, man. They, when they had it, they had it. And uh, I even been thinking about... Um, What's that record, man? The last one they dropped. Um, the last one. Do you mean when they came back or before that? Yeah, when they came back, they had. Don't let it go record. to your head. Don't let it go to your head. Yeah. I've been thinking about flipping that 2020, 21. You know, like don't let it go to your head. Yo. That shit was crazy. Yo, it was, they be all legends. They yeah, they were amazing. Yo, listen, Joe. I'm glad we managed to talk some hip hop and have some fun and not just talk about this horrifying state of the world, but um, we, everyone appreciates your voice every night, man. It's, it's wonderful to have your voice every night and people can follow you on Instagram and, and find out what's going on in the world and have a familiar I'm, voice. I'm gonna be honest with you, Rosenberg. I'm the Dan Rathers of this shit. And it's gonna be big. You know very, what? Very, very big, massive. Don't this forget me. Don't forget me, bro. Yo, but yo, Rosenberg, I never forget you. Don't forget and, me. Yeah, you know how many people try to do interviews, man. I can't turn you down for nothing. Uh, because I know your heart is pure. I know you love hip hop. And I'm the same way. And so, like, I'll drop a record with UFO feed, fentanyl flow for the I'm playing it right now. I'm playing that fentanyl flow right now. Fentanyl flow is serious. Crazy, crazy. Uh, Benny the Butcher, me and him got a joint coming out soon with uh, with with, with uh Harry Fraud. Woo. You know, I just give back to the community. Like, Wait. of course, I'm always trying to swing for the fence and make a, a fucking hit a grand slam, but I'm always with the culture. You know, Static Selector did probably one of the dopest shit that ever happened to hip hop when he was recording the album with Bun B. Mm -hmm on social media. They recorded an album live on social media. And I was in my room, I was tired. 
I couldn't sleep. And I fucking went over there to Brooklyn. The last person they thought was walking in through that door in that studio was Fat Joe. I walk up in there, and you know, they got the, they got the spitters in there. They got all the underground spitters was out there. They seen me, their eyes opened up like this, and they was like, holy shit. The giant walked in this motherfucker. And I got, you know when you wear them, uh, uh, the pajama pants, the baggy, like, like I'm looking like a bum. Like I'm that I so, but I go in there and I tell Static, yo, play me the beat you got. This all on camera. And picked the beat, came up with, with my rap. Don't say live on TV. Bum B was on there, and then I, I was about to leave. And then I said, fuck it, I'm going to make the, the hook. I was so tired that day. But we did it for the people in front of everybody. And then we made up. That was that Basquiat. Oh, yeah. Basquiat's fine. That, that, that shit was made on the spot. That shit was organic, man. That shit was like. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I just love to do that, man. I just love real hip hop. I love hip hop. I love collaborating with everybody. I love to see the growth. Shout out to the Griselda boys. Shout out to J. Cole. I seen him out there in the um, Yeah, protest. I saw that too. That was great. He's always in the protest. Always. You know, he's a real one, man. And um, I just love the hip hop, man, as a com community. And I, uh, I love what, we're, what we've been able to do. Uh, now people are looking to us as leaders. I never thought we were leaders, but they're looking to us um, as leaders and we got to connect and we and we and we got to uh stand up for the people you know well, what i mean it ain't about a dollar it ain't about nothing else well it's you're doing you're doing that you're doing that jopra appreciate you bro thank you for coming on man thank you my brother one love man all right joe talk soon peace there he is ladies and gentlemen that's fat